have discomfort, and that's a rarity. If you do it on a local, there is discomfort. I mean, there's just no way you're going to get around that, but we don't have discomfort. I put a little recipient site tumescence, which has a little catalog, and what that does, people have shown that the number one reason you can minimize postoperative edema is a little steroid in the recipient bed and a little epinephrine. So this prepares the bed during my time of harvest. So just about 10 cc's into along the hairline. I sometimes put another 10 cc's into the central mid scalp just to get that tumescent, get that bed ready prepared. Now here's a trick. Take your time with the harvest. You've got to do that for a lot of reasons. But I like this little analogy with the ship on the, on the coral's sea. I use a lot of tumescence, probably 150 to 200 cc's, and I take my time and I push that scalp far away from two things, nerve supply, blood supply. So they don't have protracted hypesthesia and they don't have bleeding or very minimal so. And I take my time to do this and I wait until that whole bed is blanched, flat and white. Very important, it's taut. If you don't have that, don't start. You need to have that. And this is just the tumescent solution. You can, you can email me if you want the, the solutions. Prior to my closure, here is the gold standard. I love this. If you guys are doing hair transplants and you're not doing a trichophytic closure, I really recommend you to do this. It's an incredible difference. You take a millimeter of skin off the bottom lip of that incision and it allows the hair to grow through the scar. I have a hard time finding my scars unless a patient's had maybe five procedures or something like that. But generally speaking, in most patients, you can't see my scars even at close range. That's what's great about a trichophytic. It doesn't take more than a few minutes and it's absolutely worth your taking that level of care. Then I go back and reinforce that block. Um, the same thing applies, this ship on coral, is that the tumescence, remember, I had a patient ask me, hey, Dr. Lamb, do you do this? That tapping noise, fast tapping, means several things to me. One is the doctor is sloppy because they're just making fast sights. I make really careful sights and you're gonna see them in a moment. The second thing it means to me is that they don't give enough tumescence, so they're not protecting the blood supply below the scalp. You need to protect the blood supply. God is in the details, and these are the details I want you to think about when you think about good hair restoration. So how do you create the sites? This is the artistry. This is what I love to do. When I do hair restoration, I'm in love with it. I enjoy this exercise. It's terrific. It's not boring. You've got to keep low angles, really low angles to the scalp when you're making those sites. Do you see this patient up here is lying flat down? It allows my hand to make low angles like this to the scalp. When you make low angles, it does several things. It visually draws the hairline down. It also allows you not to see the insertion points of the graft. And therefore, it's a much more natural result than this. And you see this all the time. I'm going to show that to you. And you, and you want them interlocked back like a row of forest trees. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. And no splaying. Okay? In other words, like a book. If you just splay those graphs out like this, you can have a complete see-through. My graphs are forward and interlocked, except for transition zones, which I'll show you. And obviously in a regularized hairline. I compare that to like a shoreline, you know, like a little shoreline. Each zone is different. Each zone is important. The hairline, the central forelock, which is a critical aesthetic zone. Especially when someone looks at you from every frontal angle, you double your graph density in that area, you double your visual density all the way around because that's where people see from every angle. The lateral hump, remember that past the lateral canthus, if you're restoring hair, you can't just restore the angles that look like a hairline. It's got to restore like the temporal sweep. And if that doesn't make sense, I'm going to show it to you in a moment. And then the crown is a very complicated way to tr area to transplant. I'm going to show you those areas. So each of these have a unique pattern of hair growth. 